my great pleasure to welcome you all here today. Thank you all for being here, for gathering, for what should be a very exciting announcement today. It is so wonderful to see so many leaders that have worked for so long on Interstate 73 represented here in this room today. We would not be at this point if it were not for all of your efforts. When it comes to advocacy and legislative priorities, there is no project that does more for public safety and economic development than Interstate 73. That's why it has been such a high priority for this community. We've long known that when you take on a big project like building an interstate, that it's going to require local, state, and federal partnership. Our area is so fortunate to have such a persistent and resilient leadership at the local, state, and federal levels that are advocating for this project, as you can see here today. Governor McMaster is such a great friend to the Grand Strand and to Horry County. He had our backs during COVID-19, and he's had our backs during hurricanes and storms. He's responsive to our needs, and he's a man who keeps his promises. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce the 117th governor of the great Palmetto State, <laughs> Mr. Henry McMaster. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, it's a, I know it's a delight for all of us to be in the, at the great Grand Strand again in this announcement today is of particular interest in the PD and the Grand Strand areas, both beautiful parts of our state. So uh, our approach on development and prosperity for the people of our state rests on three pillars. It's the uh, environment, the economy, and education. And all of, and they intertwine. You can't have one without the others. This too will not take us to where we want to go. We have to have them all. And this project that we're announcing today has been the subject of great interest for years, involves all of those, because people come from all over to see the great environment in this part of our lovely state, and in doing so, they contribute to our economy. And when they contribute to our economy, we're able to have plenty of money to educate the young people in schools. I believe that I-73 will be a transformative component in South Carolina's future economic prosperity. This new interstate will connect supply chains to efficiently move goods and services across our state and infrastructure that connects our people to jobs, health care, and education. The Grand Strand contributes mightily to our state's economy through a variety of use taxes such as sales tax, hospitality tax, gas tax, among others. According to the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism, two counties, Georgetown and Ori, were responsible for about 37% of the statewide tax revenue visitors to South Carolina generated in 2019. Georgetown generated about 44 million in state and local taxes from visitor expenditures. Ori generated about 508 million in state and local taxes from visitor expenditures. It has been reported that the completion of I-73 may create 29,000 new jobs and pump billions of new dollars into the Grand Strand and PD regions. It will create economic development opportunities for the surrounding communities. The new interstate will start at I-95 in Dillon County, just around the corner from the New Inland Port. It will pass through Marion County exit, exits and on-ramps along the way that will connect to Grand Strand employers with an easier cheaper and faster commute, a daily commute that today is almost impossible for way too many people. In addition, I-73 will help save the lives of Grand Strand residents and visitors by providing a critical means of evacuation in the event of a hurricane or natural disaster, and in some cases will reduce, will reduce evacuation time by up to 15 hours, which is critical. Most of you will remember back in September 2018, Hurricane Florence came to visit and dumped massive amounts of rainfall on eastern North Carolina, most of which came into South Carolina along with the rainfall that landed here. 
It created catastrophic flooding along the Lynches, Great PD, Little PD, and Waccamaw Rivers, surpassing anything recorded in modern history. Access to the Grand Strand was threatened by these historic rising floodwaters. The roads and bridges leading in and out of Myrtle Beach and the Grand Strand were poised to breach and be washed out. This would have cut off access to Myrtle Beach and the Grand Strand for weeks, even months. Thanks to the quick action of the men and women of the Department of Transportation and the South Carolina National Guard, as you know, that never happened. Secretary Christy Hall and General Bob Livingston and their teams went to work around the clock to construct a four foot tall barriers on both sides of US 501 in Conway to hold back the Waccamaw River and save that vital highway. Potential breaches along US 378 and State Highway 9 were blunted as well by their actions. There never has been a better example of why we need to build I-73. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity and we may be taking the most significant step towards making I-73 a reality. If we seize this moment by thinking big, being bold, and making transformative permanent investments, we can enormously enhance South Carolina's very bright future. I can think of nothing more transformative than the state of South Carolina committing the first $300 million to the state's projected share of $795 million for the construction of I-73. The way the cost share will break down is local, will be 350 million, which is 23%, federal, which will be 430 million, or 27%, and the state, 795 million, three, which is 50%, 300 million, of which we are projecting to commit today. The total of that is 1.6 billion. The source of that is the Department of Transportation. What I'm doing is recommending that the General Assembly set aside these funds, these, this 300 million from two f sources, the American Rescue Plan known as ARPA and the 2022 state budget. We created surplus funds during this. Other states went in the hole. The state has a $1 billion surplus of one-time funds available for next year's budget because we have strong businesses and because we did not close as other states did. The investment again is the ARPA funds 100 million, the budget surplus 200 million non-recurring funds. I believe that this commitment may be the most significant step we can take towards making I-73 a reality. It is my hope that this commitment will serve as a catalyst for our local government partners to finalize their investment plans for I-73. The local share required to build I-73 will be around $350 million, according to Secretary Christy Hall, whom you'll hear from in a moment. I'm also hopeful that the state's commitment will strengthen the position of our congressional delegation as they work to secure federal funding for I-73. This was accomplished before concerning the Port of Charleston. As you may remember, several years ago, the General Assembly appropriated $300 million for the dredging of Charleston Harbor. They did it to demonstrate the state's commitment and resolve to the Corps of Engineers and the federal government. As you know, it worked. Our congressional delegation worked hard and the federal funding was secured. The harbor dredging is almost complete today as we speak and the big ships are coming in. So like the Port of Charleston, I-73 will be a transformative component in South Carolina's future economic prosperity. The PD is beautiful, and so is the Grand Strand. Let us seize this opportunity, and let's get to work. Thank you. Uh, Secretary of Transportation, Christy Hall. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Governor McMaster. In 1973, the need for Interstate 73 was first identified as a priority for this area. That's uh, nearly 50 years ago. 
when the population of Horry County was approximately 70,000 people. So just think about that. 50 years ago, somebody said we needed this interstate and the population was only 70,000 people in this area. By 1991, that population figure had doubled. And in 1991, Congress took action and noted the need for I-73 by designating it a high priority corridor in the Federal Surface Transportation Program. Since that time of 1991, our delegation has sent nearly $100 million here to South Carolina that's been matched with $20 million in state funds to get the project to where it is today, shovel ready. So that means permits in hand, right away acquired, plans worked on, basically waiting for the funding to come to build it. So here we are today. South Carolina is the 10th fastest growing state in the nation, which I know you all know, certainly in this area. Uh, this region is, is bursting at the seams, as you know, today. Reference the 70,000 people back in 1973 when this project was first envisioned. As of the 2020 census, the population in Horry County alone is at 351,000 plus people. So five times higher than when this project was first envisioned nearly 50 years ago. The need for this project is urgent and it's critical. Not only are we looking to try to evacuate the people during a natural disaster, as the governor mentioned, much significant higher population volumes, trying to get the people out in a, in a uh, quick and expedited and efficient manner. An interstate connection is absolutely essential in order to make that happen. On top of all that, besides the residential growth in the area, your chamber and others have been very successful in bringing a lot of tourism to the area. A lot of visitors, 20 million visitors annually was the latest number I just received from the chamber. Just imagine during peak summer months, which is during hurricane season, us trying to evacuate a huge influx of visitors and tourists as, long, as, as well as the residents of the area. The need is there. It's clear in my mind that I-73 is needed today just as much as it was needed in 1973. The governor mentioned gridlock on the roads. You all know that very well during the summer today. US 501 and other highways in the area are extremely congested during the peak times of summer. And that's not gonna get any better. That's just gonna continue to get worse, especially without this highway. Based on our projections, I-73 would improve travel times by as much as 30% in the area. And it would create a positive economic development climate for this region, including the other counties, Dillon, Marion, all the other counties along the way, which are in desperate need of that boost from an economic de development standpoint. The improved movement of freight, people, and goods and visitors through this area is essential. And if you think about the connection to the new port in Dillon, all those elements come together to create a true multimodal movement of people and goods throughout the area. But that critically needed east-west evacuation route is obviously a high priority in my mind and is uh, part of the reason why we're here today to, to, uh, to announce this uh, investment. I too, as I'm sure Director Parrish will, echo the governor's call to invest in this very important project. As I said earlier, we are, we are ready to move forward with a phase one of this project. That invest, initial investment of $300 million to build the segment from I-95 to US-501 which if, uh, if you don't mind, the map is right behind you, if you would slide so we can, so you can see the map. So uh, what we're proposing, what we are proposing with the $300 million uh, initial funding investment in the project as recommended by the governor is to construct phase one of the project, which is to build a new interchange for I-73 at Interstate 95, to construct six miles of interstate uh, of, of I-73 down and below LADA to tie into US 501. And again, that's a $300 million investment as the governor recommended, uh, funded with 100 million of the ARPA funding and 200 million of the state general fund revenues. He also mentioned the rest of the project. How do you, how do you fund the rest of the project? And we have developed a funding uh, scenario for that utilizing uh, federal discretionary grants, earmarks, and state funding, as well as local funding, so that everybody uh, comes together to make this project a reality. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the governor. Dwayne Parrish, Parks, Recreation, Tourism. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Um, good afternoon. 
Uh, beginning in March of 2020, uh, with the onset of COVID, um, we experienced the tourism in South Carolina on a roller coaster. I was on weekly conference calls with Karen Riordan here from the chamber. And just as we thought tourism may be on its way back, cases would rise and would go back down. We went through this all of 2020. In March of 2021, as vaccinations rolled out, um, people began to come back. Um, visitors started traveling again. And quite frankly, the domestic leisure traveler came back with a vengeance. Um, we saw this in the spring and throughout the summer. Quite frankly, le leading up to the last six months of record tourism in South Carolina. During that time, outdoor recreation became the preferred, cho preferred choice for travelers during that time. Think about the things that they became, uh, that became their choices. The beaches, golf, state parks, um, paddling, kayak kayaking, boating, canoeing, fishing, all of which are right here on the Grand Strand. And that has carried through today and will carry through likely through the rest of 2021, in which case I anticipate 21 being another record year of tourism following 2019. Within that time period, on a given weekend in the summer, there are over 300,000 visitors here along the Grand Strand Coast. As mentioned earlier by uh, Secretary Hall, on a hurricane evacuation, a lot of these visitors are not familiar, as we are here in local, locally, with hurricanes and what to do and how to evacuate. It's critical they have an artery back out away from the coast. South Carolina's tourism generates about $1.9 billion in state and local taxes. Um, you heard some of the numbers from Governor McMaster and what, what comes from the Grand Strand. Essentially, two-thirds of our tourism comes from the coast, east of Interstate 95. The Grand Strand is about half of that two-thirds. The bottom line, the Grand Strand is the heartbeat of tourism in South Carolina. It's critical that we have another artery that leads to that heartbeat both in, when visitors are coming in and to get them out in cases of hurricanes. Thank you very much. Now we'd like to have uh, Congressman Tom Rice take the podium. Thank you. Wow, what a day. <laughs> you know, I grew up here and I remember when I was eight, nine, 10 years old, and if my brother and I were good, every once in a while on the, in the summertime, my mom would give us a dollar apiece and she'd carry us down to the pavilion and drop us off. 10 cents a ride. We'd be there for a couple hours and she'd come back and pick us up. I was giddy. That's how I am today. You know, I have fought this battle, but not just me. Most everybody in this room has fought this battle for a decade or more. When I got to Congress in 2012, they'd been talking about this road for decades. We didn't have a permit. The, the environmental study wasn't completed after all that time. And I, that's when I really got to know Christy Hall. And I got to tell you guys, a lot of people say they're for I-73, but this governor, when he was running, he said he was for I-73. It's one thing to say you're for it. It's another thing to do something about it, right, governor? <laughs> Christy Hall, when I got to Congress, I said, we, we need to have regular meetings. We met every month, every other month, looking at what we needed to do to get from, from here to a permit. It took four and a half, mm -hmm. four and a half years, but we finally got a permit. Mm -hmm. Then come the lawsuits. Fought the lawsuit for three years. Mm -hmm. Just resolved in the last couple of months. And finally, after all this time, we're shovel ready. When this American Rescue Plan money came down, about $3 billion came to South Carolina. And I got in my car and drove to Columbia. And I said, Governor, if the federal government's going to borrow all this money, and our kids are going to have to pay it back, let's don't just spend it. Let's at least put it into infrastructure that'll pay them some dividends. And our governor, our governor, uh, to his, true to his word as always, comes through with the first $300 billion, uh, a $300 million investment in I-73. Now, that's going to be great for tourism. It certainly will affect the way people, when they're up in Ohio and they're looking at their Google Maps and trying to figure out where they go, and they notice that all those beaches in Florida, they have interstate connections, right? Now they're going to see that Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, has an interstate connection too, right? It's going to help tourism. Sure, it's going to help tourism. Allow a greater volume of people in and out. 
certainly protect us from evacuations. We almost had a disaster in Hurricane Florence. If we'd have been cut off on 501, we'd have had 250,000 people trapped on an island over here. We're really no way to get food or water in here. And but for their valiant efforts, uh, that didn't happen. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to make this place safer. It's going to be great for tourism, but not just for tourism. Diversified industry. If you look at our wages in Horry County, they're too low. They're too low. And too often, one thing that really, really frustrates me in Horry County, even on the Grand Strand here, with the, with the seasonal jobs, if our kids want to have good jobs, our best and brightest, guess what they have to do? They have to leave. And they go to the Charlestons and the Columbias and the Greenvilles. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of that. This will give us an opportunity to attract diversified industry. We need to protect tourism, but we need more industry with steady, high-paying jobs so we can keep our best and brightest here, right? Now, it'll help the Grand Strand, sure, but it'll also help the Marion counties and the Dillon counties and the Marlboro counties. Now, if you don't believe me, I always say infrastructure is opportunity. If you don't believe me, look at something else that Governor McMaster and Christie back here, Christie Hall, were in, in, involved in, the Dillon Inland Port. They put a little piece of the Charleston Port in Dillon, South Carolina, right off of I-95. In two years, 2,000 jobs. When I took office in 2012, the unemployment rate in Marion County was 16.6%. Those folks didn't have a chance. They didn't have a chance. After the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and trade reform and regulatory reform and the Dillon Inland Port, a little piece of infrastructure right in the middle of those very poor counties, the unemployment rate just before COVID in Marion County fell as low as 3.8%. There is nothing that I am more proud of than that. And these people played a big, big part of it. So folks, if you don't think infrastructure matters, look at what happened out there and I can prove it to you. And this I-73 is gonna run right next to the Dillon Inland Port. And guess what? We need to build the part to 95. We need to build it first and we need to get it done and we need to get it done 20 years ago. It should have been built 20 years ago, right? But it needs to go past that. And it needs to get all the way up above the North Carolina, Carolina line to 74. Why? 74 runs from Charlotte to Wilmington. Guess what our biggest tourist market is? Charlotte, biggest metropolitan area in the Carolinas. I was talking to Pat McCrory not long ago. He said, I can't believe y'all hadn't built that road yet. The, the, the South Carolina Ports Authority wants 73 built all the way up there. You know why? Because they want to head off that freight going to Wilmington. They want it at the Dillon Inland Port. So folks, this is I'm, I am giddy. I've worked so hard to get this moment I am so proud of where we are today. Thank you to these folks who, everybody in this room, thank you. You all deserve a round of applause. <laughs> who made this happen. This is a red letter day. Let's come together. Let's seal this deal and let's move forward and let's make this area better for everybody who lives here. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite uh, Mayor Brenda Bethune from the city of Myrtle Beach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to say good afternoon. I'm going to say great afternoon because this is a great afternoon for our city, our region, and our state. Uh, thank you for being here. And the time is right for us to make I-73 a reality. Not only is the Myrtle Beach area one of the top tourist destinations in the country, but Horry County is the fastest growing county in the state. And the fact is that we have no interstate connectivity, but that's going to change. I-73 will provide both our residents and our visitors a safer pathway in and out of our city, especially during hurricane evacuations and reentry. This road will help us to create more jobs by diversifying our economy, and it will increase local and state tax revenues. Simply put, 
I-73 is great for everyone, and it is our pathway to progress. And it's going to take everyone, each of us in this room, working together to make that happen. Governor McMaster, special thanks to you for your leadership and for keeping a promise to this state and to the Grand Strand area. You realize the value that we bring to the state and you have been committed to the coast from day one and we appreciate your ongoing support. <laughs> now it is my pleasure to introduce our Horry County Cha uh, Vice Chairman, Mr. Dennis DiSabato. Thank you. Um, today is an exciting day for the residents of Horry County. For roughly 30 years, we've been working towards interstate connectivity for this county, and with Governor McMaster's leadership and recommendations, hopefully we are one step closer to that goal. Interstate connectivity is important because it, it, one road will help us to create and satisfy many needs. Uh, I'm sorry, satisfy many needs. It will give our visitors a direct route to our beaches, thereby relieving strain on our local infrastructure and making commuting easier for our rapidly growing county. It will provide a much needed public safety benefit by providing a fast and efficient means to evacuate the county in the case of a catastrophic emergency. It will create a boon for economic development partners to provide necessary infrastructure to entice investment in Horry County, thereby diversifying our economy beyond simply hospitality, medical and professional services but will also help us to attract manufacturing, tech, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, and medical services. As Tom touched on a minute ago, this will help in turn keep our children who wish to go into these fields home after being educated right here in Horry County. And that is of particular importance to me because my wife and I have a three-year-old and another one on the way, and I don't want them to feel like they have to leave this county for, um, for better opportunities. Studies have shown that this will create tens of thousands of jobs in the PD region, which will increase our tax base and revenue through investment and attracting individuals to the area with higher paying jobs. Our county has consistently elected to tax themselves for improvements on existing infrastructure to the tune of roughly $1.5 billion. The local investment in this project will be derived by hospitality fees borne primarily by our area's visitors. The project has been shovel ready and permitted for over three years and we have recently successfully defended that permit in federal court. Our partners at SCDOT have been making right-of-way acquisitions along this corridor and should be completed with this part of the project in just months. And before I thank Governor McMaster for his dedication to this project, I'd like to invite my colleague Orton Bellamy up here. He would like to speak about our ability as a county and local governments to support this project without forsaking the needs of other local infrastructure projects as well. Hi, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? It's a great day, exciting day in the state of South Carolina, the PD region, Horry County, Marion and Dillon County. Thank you, Governor McMaster. Give him a round of applause there. I-73. <laughs> With that saying, we are announcement today of $350 million. Also, simultaneously, we'll be working on Highway 90 and other local road improvements because we know that, as Dennis just stated, that by force the advantage advantageous meant of an I, of an interstate of uh, South Carolina and Myrtle Beach area and the Grand Strand. If you look at an I-40, Wilmington, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Interstate 26, Savannah, Interstate 95. Today we have we'll forthcoming with I-73. It'll be a direct route, route from uh, Interstate 95 directly through Marion County, Dillon County, and to Myrtle Beach, the Great Grand Strand, and Horry County. But at the same time, We'll be uh, processing funds, looking at local road improvements, simultaneously working with the local government and building roads and making improvements to complement I-73. Thank you very much. So before I bring up, um, before I bring up Mar Mayor Marilyn Hatley, I'd like to just thank the governor again. I'd like to thank the local uh, leadership, the, the municipal governments, uh, my counterparts, on County Council who are here as well, as well as all the members of our state delegation who are supporting this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, and, and what a wonderful day. Uh, I see so many great people here and, and politics and, and 
business people and residents and we're all very excited about today. Governor, I, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come to the Grand Strand today and we're always glad to see you. We love for you to come and we thank you for working so hard to improve all uh, the quality of life that we have for our, the South Carolinians. We appreciate you understanding the need for I-73 and we greatly appreciate your funding support. Your support will open many other funding doors for the much needed project and that's what it takes. It takes partnerships and it takes coalition. I-73 is a critical roadway for our future. It will provide our residents with greatly enhanced evacuation routes when hurricanes and other potential national disasters thre uh, threaten and uh, require us to leave. It will provide a more direct link to the Grand Strand for use by our visitors. It will free up our other highways where we are now seeing so many traffic jams during our tourist season. And it will further ensure that tourism which is our primary industry, can continue to grow in a responsible manner. I-73 offers the region and the Grand Strand an opportunity to ramp up our efforts to diversify our regional and our local economy. A direct connection with a major interstate can certainly be a game changer when one is seeking to solicit different types of businesses. I-73 means more jobs and better lives for so many people. Now before I step away from this podium, I, have, I, I would like to, to share a few things about Governor McMaster. He is the most accessible governor I have ever worked with. I have, he understands the value of the Grand Strand and of Horry County. He has always been there for us and with us during hurricanes and any other disasters that we have had along the coast. Under his leadership and the way that he handled the COVID pandemic in our state, we were able to recover quicker than almost any state in the United States. And we right here along the Grand Strand are proof of that because we have had a record year in tourism this year. Again, Governor, thank you for being here today and thank you for your leadership and your courage as you continue to guide South Carolina as, and make it a very wonderful place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I bring you greetings from the South Carolina Senate. I'm uh, Senator Greg Henry from District 28 uh, up in the North Myrtle Beach uh, part of our county. The um, governor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it myself in trouble. Everybody said all the good things that could be said. I'm going to get us in trouble. I'm going to talk some politics. Um, let me, something I learned going to Columbia pretty fast was that if you want to get anything accomplished, anything really major or minor accomplished in state government, you better look at this as a game of addition. It is a game of building relationships. It's a game of, of, of listening to one another and understanding one another's positions and coming to a consensus and working together to build something good. And there are those that play politics like a game of subtraction and, addition, and division. Subtraction and division leads to failure. Subtraction and division leads to broken relationships and the lack of progress. So this project, I-73, like any major project, whether it be Highway 90 or another local road project or, or anything really worthwhile pursuing, is going to come about because we stand together. And I'll tell you this last thing about politics, and, and I'll sit down, that if we, if we do not stand together, there are those in our state and if this is, and, I'm, and Governor, I know you're the governor of the whole state, but I don't, I don't represent the whole state. Uh, <laughs> there are those in the state of South Carolina that are going to be ready, willing, and eager to slip into that opening that we give them if we divide ourselves. So I urge our community to join together for this project 
and for the other many worthy projects that will be, we will continue to work on. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Case Britton, Representative Britton from uh, District 107. I represent Myrtle Beach and the greater outlying areas. You've all heard today about the benefits of I-73 and, and many thanks to the governor for his announcements today. Uh, I'd like to share more of a personal story um, that uh, you won't hear in papers or read in papers because it's not something that is talked about that much. Uh, as I was traveling back last Thursday with my kids in the car, a reporter happened to call me and I'm not smart enough to turn the iPhone off the car audio back to iPhone itself. And he was asking me about the money that was coming for I-73 and uh, did I know the final amount? And I was trying to be, you know, cagey a little bit and not say too much, trying to keep my kids quiet in the background as well, which is a very hard task to do, especially my youngest son. Uh, but then after we got off the phone, because they love Governor McMaster so much, they think I'm almost like a third grandfather, they said, what is, Mr. What is Governor McMaster doing? I said, well, he's, he's hopefully coming down here to uh, make a huge announcement about I-73 and the money that we need to get secured for funding. They were asking how much it would cost, and I was like, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of money. Well, how much money? I was like, well, we're hoping, you know, the, the governor's going to say around $300 million. And, wow, Dad, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of money. So we go into the house, and normally when we go into the house, the kids run to the pantry and grab a snack, a juice box, or whatever. Uh, they disappeared, and they came back with this. Two dollars. So, I'll tell you this, Governor. Anna Kate Britton and Walker Britton are in for I-73. First money right here. Thank you all so much. We'd like to leave the floor open to any members of our local delegation. If you'd like to take the podium now and say a few words, this is your moment to do that. We have a lot of elected leaders in the room, so anyone else that would like to take the microphone for a moment? He's got it. <laughs> Secretary Hall has it, which is more important. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have the governor uh, take questions from the media. Thank you. I'll take questions, but Christy Hall got the answers. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. I understand those concerns, and a lot of people have concerns about things. They, they have different priorities, but I-73 has been, should be, and is a major priority. Uh, we are, as far as COVID and, and some other things, we, we are managing that situation. I think South Carolina has done very, very well. But um, I-73 is something that, that needs to happen, and as I, w I would say those who have other ideas, we, we, uh, we respect those opinions, but I think that, that most of, of the leadership as well as the citizens themselves want to see I-73 built, and that's what we will do. More questions? Ma'am. Well, they're going to have to vote on it, so let's raise your hands right now. Everybody for it. See, there they are. <laughs> there they are right there. Would you, you want to say anything about the money? The governor is absolutely correct, so this will be part of the uh, uh, appropriations discussion by the General Assembly uh, coming in uh, late this fall or early spring. More questions? Uh, no, sir, I I'm, am sure that the delegation here, as well as the citizens, uh, want those uh, uh, Highway 90 and, and others, they want other improvements, but this is one uh, for which the time has come, and we have an opportunity now that we may never have again to deal with uh, large amounts of money like this that we can put in a project that will be a, 
uh, an enormous benefit and a game changer for, for the much better for this part of the state. Well, the, I, I think the, 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 time li the timeline for finishing the project depends on us, us getting the money uh, appropriated. So that, that will happen in, in just months, we, we expect. Mm -hmm. and Thanks yes. for there, Governor. So uh, as you've heard many folks uh, reference prior to me, the, the, uh, the permits in hand, the right-of-way is acquired, all of the right-of-way for this phase one. Uh, so really all we have to do is get to a point of getting the funding in the bank and ready to go and uh, seek bids for it so you know we could be less than uh, 12 months probably <coughs> six to nine months uh, time frame from uh, taking bids and being ready to turn dirt on this project and then we would schedule su subsequent phases based on funding as it starts to materialize for the rest of the project but uh, we're ready to go pending the funding more questions We just do a what? Well, we we're, we're going to get the federal funding, right, Tom Rice? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure uh, Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott will say the same thing. Yes, ma'am. We will talk to anyone who will listen, who needs to be talked to. But I uh, assure you that uh, that all involved here, including our congressional delegation, are highly practiced and skilled in talking to those that can make this happen. Okay, here you go, she's had, I'm sorry, Secretary. Governor, let me add one more thing to this. Um, it, you know, uh, the issues with this project has always been the, the, the funding part of it. Now that we've got a great plan laid out for how to achieve that, we shouldn't lose sight of the federal uh, surface transportation uh, topic that's up uh, for a matter of debate in the House uh, in D.C. today and uh, over the next several weeks. With that program, based on our analysis of it, there's going to be approximately $18 billion available in discretionary grant programs. So we, we expect submitting a lot of grant applications for that discretionary grant uh, programs. Uh, it's more than doubling what has been available in the past. So we feel like we've got a great chance to get it when you've got a shovel-ready project a lot of state and local commitment for it. It just sets us in a very good place to be able to, to compete well for that type of funding. So I look forward to working with our delegation and others to seek that grant funding. We haven't, we haven't come up with a formalized agreement between the municipalities about how much money locally will be invested. Um, I think your numbers are off a little bit. Um, the county's portion of the hospitality fee revenue that we have indicated we are prepared to provide to the project would equal roughly 76 to $80 million. Um, but that is just the county's portion that does not include the municipalities that would be uh, coming into the agreement as well. So. I don't know if I don't know if you want to elaborate on that any further. We're all in discussions with our individual councils. Mayor, if you want to come forward as well. But what's important is that we're all committed and we all realize that we have to have a stake in this as well. So our bodies are still working with our staff, with our CFOs, with the city manager. Um, as well as our individual councils to come up with what our funding plan will be, but I will say that we're committed. That's right. Um, I, all the councils are, are working with our, and our city managers are working together. Um, and we, of course, are talking to not just Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach, but we're talking to all the cities. Uh, because I-73 is going to benefit all cities <coughs> in the county. Uh, and so we want everyone to have the opportunity to be a part of, of, of being a partner in this, uh, this wonderful um, gift here of I-73. So if the federal government is going to be involved and the state government's going to be involved, county government's going to be involved, 
and all municipalities should be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. That ends this.